next guest this morning, Brunello Rosa, Rosa and Rubini Associates. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. So we do see a great enthusiasm, which is pretty normal. Uh, I'm talking about the enthusiasm that Mario Draghi brought to um, European markets, specifically when it comes to the bond market and, of course, equities, mostly Italian equities, which are totally outperforming uh, their European peers. I was wondering how long do you think this euphoria might, might go ahead? And do you think that the European standing of Italy has changed? Um, I think there's space for um, for this euphoria to last uh, a few weeks, because Mario Draghi um, will need to set up his government um, in the next few days, get the confidence vote, um, have his program approved by various parties, and so it will take a um, few weeks before uh, some of the initial difficulties might actually arise, and they are typically related to the ability of this government to pass legislation through parliament. So um, for at least uh, two or three weeks this is not going to happen. And, and you know what the problem is, if this is a government of national unity, as people say, uh, it means that there will be um, representatives for, from all parties. And these are parties that have fought each other for the last uh, few years, if not decades, and therefore the positions are going to be quite uh, <coughs> distant and far away. So there might be the risk of um, paralyzing vetoes in Parliament. And uh, if that's the case, this is when difficulty is going to start arising. But again, this is not something that we foresee happening in the immediate future. This is the Europeans, of course, is a very great uh, side of relief to see that Mario Draghi is in charge, that Italy confirms his pro-European stance and position, and that um, even Lega, apparently, is somehow renouncing to his um, most drastic um, anti-European positions. That, as a system, system-wise, for Italy, is a net positive. Uh, yeah, uh, that's for sure. On the other hand, um, I was wondering for, for how long we can see um, the spread at 94 basis points and, and what's the target at this point? What are you expecting? The spread can be dissolved uh, for quite some time and actually could uh, narrow even further. It could go to the 80s, 70s, maybe slightly below that, although we shouldn't be carried uh, away too much. There are still difficulties in Italy, in its economic performance, and um, the difference with Germany remains on so many levels. Therefore, um, we should be aware that uh, it, it's some positive spread between German boots and Italian BTPs is warranted by the fiscal position, by the difference in uh, inflation, by the difference in growth potential and effective growth. So. Um, uh, we should be careful and not be um, carried away uh, too much. Um, however, this is a, a good period for Italian asset, being um, equities, being uh, the bond market, and is around, as I said, it's going to last for a few more weeks. So we have another major story today. I just wanted to show. The Wall Street Journal opening Trump impeachment trial opens with debate over Senate's power. Uh, and not only, we uh, saw yesterday House Democrat release COVID relief plan detail. Uh, it's certainly a huge amount of money uh, with a target price, target mark, price, price target at $1.9 trillion. Uh, this is certainly extremely ambitious and Republicans um, do not agree at this point. So there are a few uh, points that um, divide. Uh, the uh, financial society. From one point, we have the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. She totally sustains, um, supports the plan, and she says that uh, if the plan will be adopted, enacted in the in the very in the very um, short future, we are going to see a full uh, employment recovery in 2022. On the other hand, a lot of other pundits are saying that this might cause a much faster inflation. Um, in the long run. So, uh, from which side are you stand? Do you stand? 
Um, yeah, these are two separated uh, issues, the impeachment and the um, uh, fiscal stimulus package. Of course, they are somehow linked to the fact that uh, the fiscal stimulus package also needs to be approved by um, uh, the Senate, but that doesn't require the majority that is required for uh, the impeachment. And somehow the Democrats with 50 seats and uh, Kamala Harris um, hosting the uh, casting vote, uh, holding the casting vote, uh, they are able to pass legislation uh, with a simple majority through Senate. So somehow these two issues are related, but not uh, uh, so deeply so. I mean, from a political perspective, the Republican Party will have to decide whether they want to um, uh, somehow ditch Trump and return to a less populist, more um, a traditional mainstream position, or instead continuing along the lines that were initially uh, provided by Trump of uh, a radical sh shift towards the right-wing extremist position and populist. That's a major decision the Republican Party will have to make. And again, the Republican Party is a key party for all Western democracies because um, is a traditional party uh, of, of power in the leading democracy in the world. The same way the CDU is absolutely crucial for the entire European construct. Regarding the stimulus, I think it's, um, it's still a positive thing that the stimulus has been approved. True, uh, it might be a little bit late in the game, um, in the sense probably something of this dimension would have been preferable a year or so ago. Um, uh, might not be uh, uh, designed in the smartest possible way. It's um, a reliance on uh, full transfers of money to people that perhaps don't even need them uh, might not be um, totally uh, shareable in, in terms of content. But in the end, the uh, US economy was severely hit. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of people are suffering, especially for the low to medium income uh, uh, social classes. And therefore, definitely help is needed for those people. So will this be inflationary as some people? Uh, suggest. Um, inflation in the short run can come from base effects, including from oil prices, and some narrowing of um, the supply of uh, goods and services, perhaps because of the disruption in global supply chains. This is what inflation can come from in the short run. And the central bank is very much ready to look through these possible spikes inflation because um, they know they are going to be just transient. Instead, on the longer run, inflation um, can only come uh, if there is a narrowing of the output gap, uh, therefore a return towards full employment, uh, a rise in wages, and if this is coupled with the bottleneck in the, um, uh, in the supply chains, perhaps other base effects, Okay, that could be uh, the basis for um, a much more persistent inflation, but I don't see this happening before a couple of years anyway. So short-term rises in inflation are, in, uh, are possible, but I believe they will be transient, and I think the central bank is ready to look through them. All right, thank you very much, Brunello Rosa, CEO, Rosa and Rubini Associates. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a good day.